Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a legend of photography, a man who has indeed been described as the most significant photographer of Germany's post-war years. And here he is in person, FC Goodlach. Thank you very much for joining me today on Talking Germany. Thank you. It is a pleasure and a privilege. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, uh, these days, FC Gundlach doesn't do too much photography himself, but he has long been an outstanding and highly influential collector. Uh, his life and his work have so often and so closely reflected the zeitgeist that is the spirit of the times, and I'm sure it's going to be fascinating to hear what he has to say about the following topics. Iconic images, FC Gundlach is famous for carefully constructed compositions that have shaped and mirrored an evolving German society. The trauma of war, it's often almost impossible to overcome memories of wartime suffering, as our guest knows all too well. And place of rest. In these cash-strapped times, some cemeteries are being turned over to other uses. FC Gundlach, meanwhile, is building his own mausoleum. FC Gundlach, um, welcome once again. You've had, a, you've had a long and fascinating life. And recently, I was amazed to see you quoted as saying the following. I'm still on the edge which I think is fascinating, but what did you mean? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, that all my life, in a certain way, I was um, curious about changes, curious of things happening, or, um, and a different fashion, also different. Fashion is not clothes only. Fashion is, uh, um, uh, all our life is influenced by fashion. Even the way we speak, the way we eat, and the, the, the way we behave, and uh, and out of that uh, sp uh, spectrum, you know, uh, there are always uh, uh, for me um, uh, uh, coming uh, ideas of d doing something, like starting collecting. Mm -hmm. it, it's very unusual that a photographer is going to 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 collect photography of other colleagues. You Absolutely. Know. Usually yeah. it's a competition or whatever it is. But but I thought it was very funny, uh, very, very, for me it was very interesting to see first what they do and, and have the context. Uh, and also and out of these contexts developed friendships and also ideas of uh, corporations, mm -hmm. for instance. And uh, um, in, in the middle of the 60s, for instance, there was a new... A uh, technique of printing color photography. Uh, up to that, photography was black and white, and for 100 years we believed the uh, the Wahrheit. Uh, was that right? The truth. The truth mm -hmm. the is truth. Like, the, tru <laughs> the truth is black and white. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, but. The truth is color, was always color, you know? Yeah. And now it was possible to, to make it also in, 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 in fashion photo, photography for the beginning of the 30s, but in the 50s, we started to make prints out of it. And so, so you know, I, I found out, you know, that uh, um, I developed a system, an, an old, we revitalized an old system, mm -hmm. an old technique mm -hmm. uh, in, in printing, which is called dye transfer. So you brought it back to life. Yeah, yeah but back to life, mm -hmm. and and you know, and, and very, 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 very successful mm -hmm. to me. And I made a portfolio of Erwin Blumenfeld. Erwin mm -hmm. Blumenfeld was a famous photographer, mm -hmm. and he worked mostly in in, in Paris and then in, in New York. And uh, and he had a very close contact to Dadaism, to Surrealism, and this was what uh, was it was interesting me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and he did it in color first. And he died in '63, and then, uh, I, and, and then I had the, the idea. I went to the, to the children uh, to ask them for, 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 for the copyright, and uh, they gave it to me. And then I, I published a portfolio of t ten of his most important photographs in this system. And when the, when this was presented in New York, I got a call of a photographer named Irving Penn. Yeah, well, a very famous man. Yes, and he said, I have the same problem. I used at the same time the same material, mm -hmm. have the same, same problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I uh, said, Mr. Penn, the only way to do is you, you have to come to Hamburg and have to see me and, and, and then we can solve your problem. And he did and he came. Wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, this is, of course, it's, it's, it's a tool, you know, to start a, a, a new dimension of your own life. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Um, let's talk a little bit philosophically about photography. There are, it seems to me there are two ways of taking a photograph. Either you're looking for the spontaneous, you're looking for the moment that just happens mm. like that. Yeah? yeah, or you're trying to construct the staged image. Yeah, yeah. Your your method is to construct the staged image. Tell us a little bit more about how and why. I try to to integrate inferences from outside, from from art. For instance, that's very important. New contemporary art. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, um, uh, is the pop art. The 60s were the most important decade of the last century, for me. In my That's an interesting statement. We'll have to talk about that as well. Yeah? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, anything changes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, there was the first generation after the war. They, they took the students, you know, they, they were, then there was, the, the, the pill was invented. So it was the the, the the type of the woman changed. The woman were starting to to, uh, to to work to be independent, you yeah. know. And the pill, pill is also part of of those things. There were the Beatles, you know, who gave me their music. All these uh, are elements of the change, and these goes in, uh, into. And you wanted them all to come into uh, your photos. Yeah, be, it, it, yeah, to be visible. And I, I, I bought at that time the first prints from from Andy Warhol and and Roy Lichtenstein, and there are two photographs in the book, which it looks like a, a print of Lichtenstein, because uh, but it was uh, uh, done in the studio. Uh, you could not do it like you do it today by internet and change the background. <laughs> we had to, to build it, you know, yeah. to, to make it properly. And and uh, this was, for instance, one very uh, source of 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 uh, um, 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 of uh, was inspiration. Uh, yeah, huh? yes, yeah, uh, created from from mental creations of. No worry, let's talk about, yeah. when we talk about carefully composed images, yeah? yeah. let's go back, where, I think we've got the photo available of that shot that was in the, in the report that we were just watching, of you sitting on the ladder yeah. as a 10, 11 year old boy with a couple of other boys, yes. and you, was, you say that that was a perfectly composed image already at yeah. that stage. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the funny thing is, you know, the, um, I had forgotten these photographs, you know, yeah. and if three boys, you know, yeah. 10 years old, yeah. I, I got my first camera, the, 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 the brown bo yeah. the box, you know, mm -hmm. and the most important thing, I had a, a, an instrument which you, you, you could make a photograph, you could photograph yourself, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so you had a remote function yes. on, the, on the camera. Yeah, yeah. and... and uh, so you know, usually they make fun, or, uh, they do, but this is a composition, you know. Yeah. I forced my brother to get, to climb up, and he was very anxious. Oh, your brother? To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in the middle was a friend of us, you know. Yeah. And of course, I was sitting down uh, at the first thing, and then after seeing that photograph, forty years later, yeah, yeah after all what I had I've done, I said, this is already a completely staged photograph. Absolutely. Tell me this. Tell me about, you were a 10-year-old boy, yeah. because people always say, yeah. very famous post-war German photographer. Yeah. The wartime was important to you, yeah. the post-war period was important yeah. for your career. The pre-war years, when you were a young boy, what kind of boy were you? What can you remember, most of all, from that period? Uh, yeah, um, uh, photography was, from the beginning on, very important, you know. I had an uncle who had a dark room. Mm -hmm. And I went there, you know, and there was a, the red bulb, you know, and, and the, he had the, the uh, developer and stuff and they put in a white sheet and all of a sudden there was magic, a, magic, magic. magic. Yeah. And this magic has kept all my life mm -hmm. in, a, in a certain way, later on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all that, I mean, that was a, maybe in your life they were almost idyllic years and then the war came along. Yeah. Yeah? And this was a terrible time for you. Yeah, of course, it was a terrible time because it was a, oh, yeah, it was a, 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 a apocalypse, you know. It, and, and, you know, I, I was very young, I was 18, and, uh, and, uh, and I was, um, I, I was uh, kept as a prisoner of war, and, uh, 
and first with the, by the Americans, and the Americans brought us to France, and the, uh, but the French had uh, themselves nothing to eat or whatever it is. All of a sudden, there were um, uh, hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, so, uh, soldiers, prisoners yeah. of war, and, and they turned us to the, the French. And, and this was a very bad experience because, you know, of, of course, there was still the... the, the uh, um, the, the animosity between uh, the two sides. Animosity and 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 and, and, and they, they would, would, would also survive. And I came to the southern part of, of France, where, 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 where I had never had heard the word oradour. You mm -hmm. know, and oradour is now a signal. It's, there's a law in France yeah. about uh, a uh, sign of the a German, terrible uh, war crime. Uh, atrocity, so yeah, war crimes. Uh, in uh, and, and we were, of course, treated very badly there. You know, people when we went through the town, you know, they throw uh, stuff out of the windows and of us or whatever it is and stuff like that. And I had never, I, had, I personally had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't even know why, why this happened to me. But it was the war. I was a part of it. In that report, the message is that it's important that people tell their stories. And you have a story to tell, clearly, because you, you, it was all coming out just yes. now, yeah? One of the things you were talking about was hunger, yeah? Yes. And we have, we have almost a document of yeah. what that was about, yeah? Yes. And you're, you're going to share that with us, yeah? I'm fascinated, because I've heard about this, but please tell us yeah. about it. It's a cookbook, effectively, yes? Yeah, it, 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 it's a cookbook. And you know, I made it my um, self, and we were sitting together. And of course, the the, the food was, you know, was not, not nearly nothing. This was when you we were in the war, prison of war, of war camp. In, yeah, yeah. In, it was in, in, in northern France, in, yeah. in, in Rennes. And and uh, um, um, <laughs> but you have also things like this, you know. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. It's a, it's a poem or a prayer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I uh, know, uh, but uh, but, we, but we were sitting together, you know, uh, four or five people, you know, mm -hmm. fathers or families or whatever, who never touched a, a, a pot or whatever it is, and we were dreaming of what, what we, because we had nothing to eat, you know, we were dreaming of it, and and so the uh, and this is written on uh, American toilet paper, yeah, on American uh, toilet paper, yeah, yeah, because at at, 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 at in the beginning this this case was still American, uh, yeah. and then they turned into the fun, uh, French. Okay. And, and the American uh, 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 toilet paper was better, so you could <laughs> write on it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and what you have mainly written down here, yeah. they are recipes. That's the only recipes, yes. And how old were you? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was uh, 18 or 19. And you were, you, were, you were remembering recipes from the time when you no, were at home? Is, this or is, you were making them this up? This is or dreams. What? Everybody, dreams. Everybody was sharing a, 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 something to eat. Oh, Lord. To, to eat. Yeah. And, and, you know, then, then we, we, uh, we, um, we decided, you know, we get, we get one slice of, of bread a day. And then we were sitting together and eating together and, and decided that we, we uh, count, count us, chew. chew chew it 42 times every time. Mm -hmm. So to make the most of it. So yeah. I have the feeling you have eaten much more than you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I don't know how this comes together and, and how it survives. I don't know, because I have gone through other places, you know, later on and lost anything but which I possessed at that point, did I possess? It is amazing that it has survived and it's a wonderful thing because it is the most incredible document. Yeah, and, and, and it's also a lot of personal notes in it or, 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 and stuff like that. Do you take it out sometimes and read it? Uh, no, I never, no. No, no, I never had, you know. Where and, do you keep it? Uh, this is my, um, this is the house I was born in. And uh, you made a picture of it? Yeah. I, I from was, memory? I made my drawing out of it, and, yeah, at the time. Excellent. Listen, uh, the country where I come from originally yeah. is the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. yeah? One of the winners yeah. of a great just war against yeah. Hitler. Yeah. Yeah? Now, you suffered in a war that was a bad war. Mm-hmm. That must make it worse for you. You must think, I suffered, I went through these terrible experiences. What for? Yeah, what for? Now, you, you know, in, in the beginning, uh, at that time, you know, in, in, that's, 
January 1945, the war was lost, everything was gone. And everybody was just trying to survive. Yeah. No way how. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I, I remember one, one night, you know, we, I had to stand guard with an older soldier who were in Russia for, for five years or six years. Mm -hmm. And it was a night. It was snow and we were standing there. And uh, then he said to me, um, I have to take a leak. So, uh, and so he went around the corner and then he didn't come back. You know, and after uh, half an hour, I went there and, and, and they were, where is he? He had just had gone. He, he wanted to survive, so he left me. He didn't me tell me, of course, he couldn't tell me. So, so he, he just, just disappeared. That was the, the end, because the, uh, the army was, uh, anything was, was finished. But, but uh, to survive was, was very important, of course, that uh, f first uh, through, uh, through the, the battles or, and yeah. all, all the bombs, bombing and all that, and, and, and second, and just have to, something to eat. Yeah. Now, I was hurt, it was my leg, and, and, um, and, and, and uh, I did not realize it. You know, because you are in such an emotional um, uh, um, uh, situation mm -hmm. that you don't realize what you, with your body, you could run for 10,000 meters or, or, uh, and, and, or without realizing. <coughs> and, and then all of a sudden, a friend of mine said, you, 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 your leg is full of blood. You should go to the uh, uh, see a doctor about, yeah. about it. And then he found a... a piece of a grenade in there. And so I went in the hospital, but I can't tell you today how I left. Breslau was then uh, uh, later on... Uh, Besieged. Uh, yeah, mm. it was uh, uh, surrounded, you know, yeah. by, by the Russians. And I don't know how I got out of it. I, I just got out of it, I must but, be... But you survived. I survived, yeah. FC Gundlach. There was a, there were some lovely shots of the fifties and the sixties there. Some of them very touching, very funny. Some mm -hmm. of them some some of them absolutely uh, startling. You prefer the fifty uh, the sixties to the fifties. Mm -hmm. You said the sixties is the greatest generation of the last century. Why? The, 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 the greatest years, the most important years of change. And then, no, I think that fashion is a very substantial time uh, a part of our life. If he uh, if he uh, re realize that or uh, no, not not, and you know everybody takes a decision in the morning what he's putting on. Mm -hmm. That means he gives a signal how to be uh, uh, be uh, be seen, how to be uh, um, represented, and so on. And uh, fashion is more than clothes. Fashion is language. F fashion is uh, food. Fashion is even the language. Is changing all of a sudden today. We say geil or cool. That's the word of the moment. You know, mm -hmm. like you couldn't have said that before. And a lot but of this came from the sixties. There was an yeah, explosion definitely. in the sixties. The fifties were, you know, settling down and, and uh, 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 being surviving in, in, in a certain way, especially in but Germany. It, yeah. yeah, but in, in, in the certain structures were re, uh, rebuilt and so on, but. In, in the 60s, all of a sudden, there came the next generation. It was the students were grown up. They were mainly born uh, nearly after the war. And um, then the woman, the role of the woman were different. In the 50s, you know, many, uh, uh, the woman had to replace the man in, in the factories and all mm -hmm. that. Uh, mm -hmm. They got back to their home and, and, and to be to the traditional role as uh, 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 mother of family. In the 60s, they were more, they were more self-sufficient. Uh, yeah, they were more, they were more confident. Yeah, confident, and, 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 and they were, they, were, um, uh, they start working. Yeah, they were more independent. Yeah, and this came uh, through ma many uh, through many elements. You know, one was you know also uh, of course the pill. Yeah, Be it, 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 it was introduced. You know, it gave, it gave the, the women the possibility to, to have the freedom to decide. This is very interesting. This is you are an unusual person because in Germany these days people talk about the sixties. They say the sixties were were a time of excess. The sixties were a time of violence. That the sixties the family broke down and education broke down. And you're saying, great time. 
Liberation, revolution. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but, yeah, but it, 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 and this, but, 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 the speaking in London, these come really from, from England. Uh, and, and when you see, the, the, the Twiggy was the figure mm -hmm. for it. And if you, uh, there was recently a film in, 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 of Arte in, in, on, on, on her on life. On TV, about yeah. Twiggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on mm -hmm. her life. You see, she was a norm, very normal girl. And yeah. she, she once, you know, uh, made her make up like her puppies she had. Yeah. The eyes, very yeah. dark and yeah. all that. And somebody photographed it and all of a sudden, that's the type of today, that's the type of tomorrow. Yeah. And, and, and she was a very, very uh, bourgeois girl, you know, mm. and, 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 uh, but she was the type of the moment. You're talking about the role of women, you're talking about women in general. Yeah. Why did you take so many photos of women and so few of men? Men were no subject of, of, of fashion. Yeah, but, but, it, was it was the clothes. That was yeah, the reason. Yeah, more well, I, have or less, the more I have less. the feeling you're less interested in men for photography. Yeah, yeah. No, the, 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 they were not interested. <laughs> guys, they were, they were no, no, no collection and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Very, very rarely, you know. I went to, in the 50s to, to, to Paris mm -hmm. to see the haute couture. Yeah. yeah. In the middle of the 60s, there came the Bretter Porté. Yeah. That, that means the haute couture was out, and uh, uh, you know, very fashionable, fashionable, available to everybody, to more and more, more that people. That was a big development. And there was the music, which was very yeah. important. One second, before you, get, before you talk about fashion, before you talk about fashion photography, let's yeah. just have a look at some shots while you're talking. Yeah? Yeah. I think we've got a little collection there. Just tell us about what, we, what we're seeing here. Just a little bit. Give me the general feeling. Yeah, this is a, the, the Burning Collection, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, you see it's, it's a summer collection. This was the first, this was 63, you know, 63, 65, about. But you see, yeah, this was, was starting to traveling. This, this shot is done in Beirut. The revolution of travel. Yeah. Normal people could travel no, suddenly. No, of course not. We were very yeah. 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 privileged, you know. And this, is, this show was done in Athens, and that in Paris. That was the first collect, collection of Courage. And this is my Liechtenstein, see? It looks really like... A, ah, that's a, the one you were talking about. Yes, yes it really does, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then this, the 70s, you see that? The 70s, it's, you see, it's, it's softly softer, different. It's yeah. uh, uh, streaming and, and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, but all the music, anything belongs to this uh, decade. Okay. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and, and there were, the men start being involved also, you know. They had all of a sudden long hair. Yeah. Which, which was so obvious, you know? Yeah. Or, 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 but the music was very, very big. Of course, of course. It was yeah. a sensation. Now listen, you, you, took a, a, you, you did a lot of photography of some pretty big stars, yeah. and I said to you, you didn't do many men, you didn't do many shots of men, or all that many. Yeah. We, we have got one, I think we've got here, let's have a look here, talking about the big stars. We've got Cary Grant, I think. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I, tell I, me about that. I, 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 I made a lot of photographs for, for, for movie companies, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, the, of course Hollywood was sending films all over the world, but they had no material for the press material, and and this was the Barry Dala at the time, mm -hmm. and and uh, he, he was the, the guest of honor, mm -hmm. and he had, but he had in his contract that he had to, to work two two hours with me, yeah. and he did, and he was a real professional, you know. He knows. Was he charming? Uh, he is. He is what, 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 he's a profi, yeah. A professional. A, a professor. Yeah. And, and it's mostly the, the first two minutes, and you know how you get, can, can get the logo on or not. Okay. And uh, you could. Yeah. Yes. It was, yeah. Did you yeah. get along with Romy Schneider? We have yeah. a, we have a photo of Romy Schneider. Yeah. This to talk is, about a German Austrian I, I think star. Th this this is my, my, my most important picture I, I ever took. Oh. She was tw twenty one years old. And, and you know, she looks much older. Yeah, this is the tragedy. Yeah. This is, you can see this the tragedy is, in the making. This is not a picture of Romy Schneider. This is a picture of, of Rosemarie Albach. That's her real name. Yeah. Yeah. And she found uh, herself in that picture. Yeah. She has uh, dozens of times ordered prints from this picture. Yeah. Uh, and you know, she, it was after the Sissy movies, you know? And. and uh, um, uh, she wanted to break out of it. 
And then she made a movie, a, a television movie, and Kochter was a, a, the director, mm -hmm. and she was a, had a, a play a Tashik role, and, and the, the, the audience didn't expe and, and accept it. And, and so she was very, very sad at, in that moment, you know? And she looks very, very and, sad. And, yeah. and, but we had four hours to work together, and it was nobody there. It was just my assistant, she and I. And we did anything ourselves, you know, and in, in the in, intimacy in, of city. This year, that was also her moment to open herself. Okay. These pho photographs were taken with a very long lens. Mm -hmm. So I was not also not very close. She could feel herself in, in a way. And this made these pictures. She was herself and she was isolated, ultimately. Yeah. yeah. And, and okay. she, she was not very lucky in, in choosing her man, the man. She, you know, this was the next step of her as see. But that, as they say, is another story. <laughs> that's another story. That's, that's another movie. Mr. Gundlach, do you like cemeteries? I think it's very important that we remember the people who lived, we lived with or where we're coming from. And in the last years, you know, the, the, the big families, the great families living together, mm. uh, broken, you know, people move, they were movable. So nobody takes care maybe of, of the Friedhof means peace. The German word, a Friedhof, yeah. is a place of peace. Yes. A cemetery. Uh, yeah, a mm. cemetery is a place, Absolutely. a place of peace, yeah. of final peace. Mm -hmm. And... There are two moments in our life, I say. Oh, first is our, our birth, which we have no influence to it. We are at some birth somewhere, somewhere in, in some situation. And the second is our death. And both are definite. Yeah. And so, when I came to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a, a big cemetery, yeah. I, I saw a, a place of, there was a, vet, a meadow, and then the man who was guiding me was saying, he are buried 16,000 hamburger. Yeah? And uh, it, it looks as if I felt like standing in, in front of a mass grave or something like this. Um, and I think it's, it's part of our life also if we are not there anymore. And uh, then I was th thinking about... Uh, uh, death on my own death, and I, I wanted, I wanted to, 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 to take the decision um, and not leave it to anybody who is emotional, uh, 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 not in, in, in the situation, or mm -hmm. you know, nobody. We we we, we deny, you know, yeah. the, the, that we are dying. But we, we, most we, people do, but clearly all, you don't. So no, and 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 since it's, it's sort of a fact, uh, uh, a fact which is, is in, in, uh, coming at a certain moment. You no, know, I, I wanted to 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 uh, to do it for, uh, in my way, and so I, I decided uh, to have a, a little mausoleum. It was three by three by three meters, which was too big, and, the, and then the architect said. But a coffin is 240. So and I hope you won't need it for a long time to come. That's, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Gerne, that's all we've got time for today with our wonderful guest, FC Gundlach, a man who's had a really inspiring life. Uh, if you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, do come back next week. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs>